Hi everyone and welcome to Jatai Academy. I am Charlie Bowl, also known as Shrunken Heads on Instagram. Today I'm going to be creating a modern mullet using a feather styling razor. Uh, this year actually marks the 30th anniversary of the feather styling razor and I am super stoked to be part of that because I'm punk rock and you know what I mean? Like to be stage dive into that would be fun. Before we get started, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the bell notification to get notified for new Education Connect videos. So I'm going to start here in this temple area and I'm not going to do any of this area until the end because this front fringe is going to be really hard to control. So I want to create a little shape here and I've got my perimeter sectioned out and that's where I'm going to start to begin my foundation. I'm going to be using the detailing feather razor. It's a shorter handle than the normal styling razor and um, always use a new blade always use a new blade just very gently at the top of the hairline I started at the tip of the blade and as I went work down the hair here I worked down the blade as well so you want to remember to use your entire blade and also if if you're only if you're the person that only uses the first half of your blade don't forget to take it off and turn it around this is very much like a pencil or like an eraser where I can get in there and I can just hold it and barely tap this. And I'm trying to make this as wispy as possible because you can see this person has a very, very, very small face. I don't want to make this too big and bulky and make their head look too mushroomy. So in this area, I like to make it look very wispy. Break apart those hard lines, especially with this type of hair texture. This type of hair texture will create lots of lines if you're not careful. This particular tool helps with that. As you can see, it's kind of, it's not going to allow me to cut too much. And again, I'm going to start at the top of the hair. I'm going to start at the tip and I'm going to work my way down the blade. Using a feather styling razor in this area is super easy to create like a really nice wispy look. So if you're looking for that little kind of fairy look, you want to make it look really PC and wispy, this will help you, help give you that kind of look. Very, very wispy. And this is actually safe enough to, with a brand new blade, I can just kind of get some of these hairs that I've left out just barely gently cleaning that up. With straight hair like this, um, I like to move this around kind of to create a little more random texture. So you'll see me moving the hair around and that is to create that randomized texture. And it's very easy to do with this. Like I said, it's like a pencil or like an eraser. So I'm actually trying to, if you think about it in the sense of this is a charcoal drawing and I'm just kind of blending things in and smoothing things out. Using the center of the blade in an area like this where I'm able to hold the hair, this gives me a lot fir more of a firm grip. See that nice, soft, wispy look? 
there's going to be some hair laying on top of that as well. Now I'm going to take the next section down. You can see how straight this hair is. So being careful to not leave any harsh lines. And again, this is a very good tool to not leave harsh lines. Very leaves a very soft finish. And pretty soon, I'm going to have to change out my blade. Looks like I need to change it. Once I struggle a little like that, even though I know it's sharp, I still want to change it. In case you're wondering why I tap the hair, I actually tap the hair to look for my guide because this hair is rather straight and I can see it's very difficult to, as you can see, it's very difficult to find that guide. So if I tap this, I can then find the shorter hairs. They will pop out and I can see where my guide is and that way I can get in there and detail in the right area or jump over to the next section. So as you can see this section here is shorter than the next, so I'm going to go ahead and take a slice of that with this in my hand. And down here, my guide disappears. So if I tap that, I can now see where that guide is. So that might help you with your guide. Sometimes if you take a too big of a section, you might lose your guide. And you know, in the salon, we like to save time, and uh, sometimes we don't take the thinnest sections, so I'm guilty of that. But this tool actually, like I said, will help me. Look at how, how wispy this looks already. Effortless, effortless texture with this. Just... Moving that hair around really does create a, actually a little bit more movement in that, in the hair, you see. Over directing back and forth really gives it more movement. And you can see I'm getting more zhuzh out of that. Up here I'm going to have some of this weight sitting on that anyway. Again, detailing what I just created. And I hold this razor in different ways. You can see right now I'm holding it just like this. Some days I put my pinky in here and I get in here and I, I might tuck it, tuck it this way. I might get in here this way. So there's no right or wrong way to hold it as long as you're holding it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I've let down the crown section, and actually I'm going to dig into this, but before I do that, I changed out my blade. Anytime my blade starts to slow down, I always change it out because I don't want to start damaging the hair. So um, some people might wonder, like, how many blades will you go through on a haircut like that? And something like this, I might actually use about eight blades on there because I want to keep my cuts nice and crisp, and I don't want to start splitting any hair and causing any damage to the hair. So 
getting on the subscription program would be a really good idea so that you never run out of blades. Like me. Once I reach the top of the head, I want to be careful not to cut too short because this type of hair will totally stand up in this area. And although they probably don't get much bed head with straight hair like this, in this area you don't want to create that little chicken look. Nice big chunk, over directing, there's my guide. From my perspective, I'm totally looking at the round of the head. So from where you're looking at, you're watching me cut, but from where I'm looking, I'm actually looking to create the round shape here. So this side to side and over directing this way in this area, this is where the right where the occipital is. So this, air, this hair begins to curtain out here. You can see it's just hanging over. So literally creating a round with straight hair is actually really easy to do with this. With your scissors, you would act, you'd probably cr be creating lots of lines in here. So with this, all I have to do is slightly elevate it and move around side to side and move down, and it creates a nice round shape. Follow Jatai Feather on social media and connect with us. You can also follow me at Shrunken Heads on Instagram. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to take this section and do what I did in the previous section and work that on both sides. I'm about horizontal here and then I'm going up and over, up and over. Now that I've created my shape here, I'm going to actually go in, inside of that and create some interior texture to take out that bulk. You see that bounce? That is too heavy of a bounce. So you just kind of, I just take little slices out of there, go from the mid shaft down. And this is really all feel here. I want to look and see what moves the most there. And I can see that that's kind of heavy. If it swings more, it's probably heavier. It's looking really, really good. Now, I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to go ahead and take down this last section. So as I cut this last section, I'm going to explain to you a little bit of my methodology, which uh, isn't much of a methodology. It's not your typical type of cutting. It's more of an intuitive type of cutting. And um, I look at the exterior shape the entire time that I'm cutting. I'm looking where I'm cutting, but I am also taking into consideration the uh, entire shape. So as I move, I see a new shape, a new silhouette. And moving back and forth, I'm able to continuously see that shape change. And so uh, you'll see my body tick tock as I'm, as I'm carving out this haircut because that's basically how I see it is a block of wood that I whittle down to the shape of whatever it is that you want. And as you can see, the shaking has subsided, so the nerves are now <laughs> oh, better. I love that. So being that there's, this is dense, fine hair, 
I, I can really get in there and dig quite a bit of that out of there. But what I'm looking for is just the right amount of weight in this area. Once you get to the top, you don't want to take too much of the weight out of in this in this area just because the hair might stand up. A good way to see where what is too short is taking that hair before you cut it. You can take that long hair and you can see if you push against it, you can see where that bend is. There's a bend down here, but that bend that's right in here is where right there is about as long as I can get. And it'll start, if I start to pat, go up here further, it'll start to w get wispy. So um, the interior and the exterior play a big part of this because I want some parts to be short, some parts to be long. Those longer parts are going to hold down those shorter parts and create this zhuzh that you see. This is nice and heavy, hanging down. You can see that. And this has shape. I'm going to let down this section and start working on the parietal. This is going to build the side. And see how we design this here. Again, we want to make sure that you don't cut too short. And right over the ears, I want to, I'm going to come in here and detail this area later. But um, you can see there, that little bit's going to come off. So I'm going to go ahead and start here and build my shape from this area here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I have to connect this here, but I also want to create a guide here. So before I jump back here, I'm going to cut this section and I've got it combed the way it grows. So this is the way the hair is going to lay. It's going to curve right here and lay a little straighter over here. So I'm just going to start carving right above the ear and I'm going to use the center of my blade to get that firm cut. Boom. So now I can go either way here, whichever way is more comfortable for me. Right now, I just want to work on connecting the back to the side. So I'm going to work on this little section right here. So I actually, a uh, little uh, fun fact, is I actually used this type of blade, this very same blade, to cut the wigs for Doja Cat and Saweetie for the Saweetie Best Friends video and for Doja Cat's Grammy's mullet, I actually used this very blade right here. So I'm going to do this side now. This basic portion of the haircut is very much going to be like a pixie. Just short enough to style, very young stylish person. So you have a lot of leeway. I don't want to make it too stuffy, too stiff. So I want it to be nice and playful, rigid. I mean, not rigid. I don't want it to be too rigid. You can see the hairline kind of does like a backwards J there. So we're really going to keep that there. I'm going to just barely nip some of this. I really like the way this looks in their face like that. So I might keep this as my, as a length up here. Get this out of their eyes.
I'm going to move to this side. So I'm just going to go ahead with my detailing razor and uh, I'm going to go ahead and check everything out, give the give this little fringe a little bit of uh, dressing here and kind of overall connect, make sure everything's flowing before I start to style. With a styling razor, you don't really have to push too hard. It's just, it's very easy. It's very, it's a really sharp blade and you just, all you need to do is create some tension in the hair wherever you want it and cut it in there. Like you can see I'm making that nice and wispy. Keeping it out of their eyes, but just enough. Just enough. Just like that. This is our finished look. Got a lot of hair off of there. Took a lot of length off. And in fact, all the blonde came off. And it's much lighter. You can see all that nice light texture. And all I used was one tool today, guys. So be sure to check out the Jatai Academy for more education like this. We have lots of videos up there. And again, thank you Jatai for letting me be a part of this 30 year anniversary.